Joey, the man of the hour. Oh. How do you feel being on the field? Incredible. It's uh, like we were telling you guys before, me and my wife got engaged just about 50 yards that way. Uh, I love Ross Aid. I think it's an underrated stadium, and uh, it's awesome being out here. I love it. Thank you for having me. Of course. We're lucky to have you. Thank you. Um, so, you know, we've talked about it a little bit, but why are you a Purdue Boilermaker fan? So, growing up in Indiana, especially as a Catholic school kid, it was like, you're either a Notre Dame fan or you're not. So, I kind of rolled with them for a little bit, but then I grew out of it. And then I met my wife today, and she's a Purdue cheerleader. And so I was up here for every game. I went on the road. I was up Purdue all the time. Ross State was like my second home. And uh, from that point on, I just fell in love with the campus. I fell in love with the people. I fell in love with the team. And uh, I'm rocking black and gold forever. You know, you visited the Purdue football team earlier this season. Yeah, yeah. Um, but like, what is all this Boilermaker spirit and this family that we've kind of adopted you as a Boilermaker? Yeah. What does that mean to you? Man, it means the world because, obviously, like I said, I grew up, I'm an Indianapolis kid, and I went to a small D2 school, so I didn't have the big college experience, the big college community. Uh, so the fact that a university as great as Purdue would adopt me, take me in, allow me to be a fan, I mean, it just means the world, and it, it makes me and my wife so happy, so very thankful. And you're a media person yourself. Uh -huh. How did you get on this track to like your career now? Yeah, so I worked in local media for a while after college and in college, being in Indianapolis. Uh, and then on the side, I just kept was like, I want to, I want to be funny. I want to make people laugh. And so me and my buddy Ben Polizzi, who you yeah. saw at Chipotle the other day, <laughs> shout uh, out Ben. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we just decided that we were going to do some, uh, you know, comedy sketches together and kind of pursue that on the side. And we did that for about three years. And uh, it was a small following, but then I started doing impressions and stuff too. And uh, that really popped off and kind of gave me my following. And me and Ben still work together, thank God. And uh, you know, every day the goal is still just to make people laugh. So that's what we're doing. And if that makes people happy, then I'll keep doing it. And what was it like when you got that call from Barstool? Surreal, I mean, I'm talking to Dave Portnoy and I've been following and watching them forever and him forever and all of a sudden he's like yeah come out to new york we got a spot for you i'm like i just can come out there like it's that easy and uh yeah it was pretty much that easy and you know once he once he saw me and called me and, and wanted me then i said yes and we've been on that journey ever since and it's just a dream come true and you talked about impressions you're very famous for your impressions yeah what would you say your personal favorite impression that you do is ah uh, you know, I try to I try to add to the arsenal a lot. Uh, I've really enjoyed doing Owen Wilson lately, <laughs> um, so I added him. Jimmy Fallon is a personal favorite of mine. Uh, you know, everybody loves like Nick Saban, Colin Cowherd, all that. Chris Collinsworth, people like that. So I have fun doing all of them. I really do. I mean, when I can get paid to just be a goofball on camera. Don't get much better than that. Right? So, you know, I have fun, yeah. My personal favorite is Colin Coward. Oh, thank you. Um, what, what would you say, like, after all your fans and stuff, what's their number one, you know, like, thing that they gravitate towards? Uh, yeah. I would say either Saban or Collinsworth. Okay. People really have gravitated towards Collinsworth a lot. They really, really request that a lot, and, like, they take to it for some reason. I don't know if it's the slide-in that I do, you know, on camera or what. <laughs> But they really seem to like that one, so either him or Saban. Yeah. Okay, okay. And I always have a soft spot in my heart for Coach O, you know. Oh, yeah. You just went out to visit them, I too. I did, yeah, you know. So we got to rip a gold Tigers together, and that was great. So I have a soft spot for him, yeah. Uh, what do you think of all these coaches and people that you impersonate? You know, they all have fun with it, too. Yeah. Like, what does that mean to you, that they actually enjoy it? Well, that's the thing is that, like, I always say, the reason that I can impersonate them like I can is because I'm a fan. Right. So I respect them because so much, and I watch them so much and listen to them. That makes it to where I'm able to pick up on them more. Uh, so it's never out of, like, a bad place or disrespect. It's all out of good fun and out of respect. And um, I've been really lucky that pretty much everybody has enjoyed it uh, that I've impersonated. So I've been lucky. Okay, and when we talk about Purdue again, who's yeah. your favorite Purdue athlete of all time? 
I mean, the easy answer is Drew Brees, so I won't say that. Um, I got two for you. Okay. Um, one of them is probably lesser known, but is near and dear to my heart because he grew up in the same town that I grew up in. Jason Werner. He was a captain on the 2009 team. Uh, linebacker, number 29, number 24. Jason Warner is my guy. Um, and then also, I'd say Carson Edwards. Yeah. I mean, come on. See Boogie. I mean, the, the, the amount of fun I had watching that guy play is second to none. Should have been a Final Four team. I uh. won't get into that. <laughs> uh, but, you know, a lot of the guys on this team right now, George Karloftis, David Bell is an indie guy. Uh, so I'm a big fan of them, too. Awesome. Any predictions for Purdue basketball? What do you think? Oh, national title. To, this is the you year. You heard it here first. This is the year. <laughs> they're they're taking it. They're taking the Big Ten tourney. They're taking the national championship. They have the team to do it. They have the coach to do it. They have the experience to do it. Uh, we've been waiting. We've been waiting for a long time. Yes, and, we have. Uh, I think this is the team that's going to make it to the Final Four, uh, to New Orleans, uh, and, and make it to the national championship. I really do. I really believe that. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Okay, and when we um, think about all these awesome students at Purdue, what advice would you have for them if they want to get into, you know, media, kind of your career track, or any type of, you know, comedy? Any advice you'd have? Yeah, I'd say a couple things. I'd say one, you got to find something that you would do for free, except people pay you to do it. So if you enjoy doing it that much, that you would do it for nothing, eventually it'll pay off, and somebody will pay you to do it. Uh, and then second, I'd say, if you don't have a job right out of school, create a job. Do a blog, do a podcast, make videos. Do, you know, There's so many avenues to create and be creative uh, that if it doesn't work out for you right away because it didn't work out for me right away, uh, to create on your own and then eventually you'll make something happen. Yeah, and when you talk about that persistence that you had to keep pursuing this, yeah. you know, not everyone gets to work at Barstool. Yeah. How did how did that change, you know, the way that you look at life and, and how you keep going? Yeah, I think it's just um, I, I, I reflect back on, you know, where I came from and, there, you know, I have to remind myself a lot of those times where nobody was watching, nobody was listening, yeah. nobody cared. I was doing it for free just out of the enjoyment of doing it. Um, and then I, I go back to that place and I say, it doesn't matter if I'm at Barstool or working for Purdue or ESPN or SNL or whatever it is, you know, as long as you're doing it for the good of your heart coming out of that enjoyment, then you're going to be all right. So okay. I got to remind myself of that, but that's key. It's key. I love that. Yeah. Uh, what's your favorite sports experience that you've ever had? You're a big sports guy. Yeah, yeah. So like a live event or? Yeah, sure. I mean, being from Indy, the Indy 500 every year is pretty hard to beat. I mean, you know, when they're doing taps and they're doing the national anthem and they're God Bless America and then the green flag, that's really, really hard to beat. I mean, the Indy 500 is tops. Uh, but as a fan, I'd probably say when the Cubs won the World Series. I wasn't there. I didn't make it to Cleveland. Uh, but I was, you know, I'm a diehard Cubs. I have them tattooed on my arm, for God's sake. Right there. Oh, yeah. That's a Cubs tattoo. <laughs> Uh, so when they won the World Series, that's tops, yeah. Um, and what was it like growing up in Indiana? You know, like, we always think of big media as in L.A. and New York. Yeah. What's it like being based in Indiana? Pretty wild because everybody I went to school with, it's like, you know, that's fine, but everybody's like a teacher or an accountant or a lawyer, all admirable jobs that are very needed. Uh, but when I say, you know, hey, I want to be in comedy or I want to be an actor, that's not really something that goes over too well, uh, you know, so very kind of weird, but in my heart of hearts, I had to just keep going for it and follow my dreams, and that's what I'm, you know, continuing to do. What's your favorite stadium, arena, sports venue? Uh, Indianapolis Motor Speedway uh, and Wrigley Field, and obviously Mackey and Ross A, obviously. I got engaged outside in between them, for, for Lord's sake, so... Yeah, big time. That's a true Purdue fan, getting engaged at Purdue. Yep, right outside the stadium. It's kind of unfortunate. It's great that we're doing the renovations that are going to happen, but I was joking with Rye. I'm like, yeah, eventually we're just going to be like a beer stand. You know, our spot where we got engaged is going to be like a beer stand. But You're going right. to show your kids someday. This is where we this got engaged. This is where you got engaged. You're like, you, can, you, you, you proposed at a concession stand? I'm like, it was different then. <laughs> I'm Joey Molinero, and you're listening to This is Purdue. Boiler up.